Welcome once again to Lato's Law. Here's Steve Lato. Right about now, you might want to rethink some of that social media you're doing because here's an interesting story Nathan sent me. Philadelphia woman wrongfully charged with Texas crime due to mistaken identity. And it has to do with her social media. NBCPhiladelphia.com published the story. Leah Uko, David Chang, and Dan Stam wrote it. A Philadelphia woman spent nearly a week in jail after being wrongfully arrested for a Texas crime due to a case of mistaken identity. Part of the problem is she's never been to Texas, and the crime was alleged to have taken place there. When you know that you didn't do anything wrong, it makes you feel crazy, said Julie Hudson, speaking to NBC10 after leaving custody. Now, I often leave names out of stories, but I won't hear because it's interesting that I actually knew someone named Julie Hudson also, who was a neighbor of mine a couple houses back. So... The ordeal began with a shoplifting incident at the sports store in Webster, Texas, which is near Houston, back in May of last year. Webster police identified the suspect as a woman named Julie Hudson, and they did that apparently by looking at a surveillance photo of the suspect and comparing it to social media images, and they found a 31-year-old PhD student from Philadelphia who's named Julie Hudson, and they said, oh, that looks like her. Issue a warrant for her arrest. So she was unaware she was mistakenly identified as a shoplifting suspect. She soon found herself repeatedly being denied jobs. She then found out that she had a criminal record, which didn't make sense because she'd committed no crime. So she visited a Philadelphia police station to ask them if they could straighten this out, and instead they arrested her and put her in custody. That was in January 5th. Everybody is sure that you did something, that you're a criminal, but you know that that's not who you are, she said. After her arrest, Hudson's family reached out to law enforcement in both Texas and Philadelphia to get her out. The Harris County District Attorney's Office in Texas then filed a motion to dismiss the charges against her, citing insufficient evidence. We accept charges based on the sworn evidence presented to us by law enforcement, a spokesperson for the Harris County District Attorney's Office wrote. Tuesday, Webster Police notified the court of the error. We dismissed the case within five minutes and immediately contacted Philadelphia Police to release our hold on Ms. Hudson. NBC10 reached out to Philadelphia police on Wednesday after being contacted by Hudson's family. They said, we became aware of the warrant being dismissed on January 11th at approximately 5 o'clock after receiving a media inquiry. At that time, we immediately requested that Ms. Hudson be released from custody and are actively working with the Philadelphia Department of Prisons to process her release in an expeditious manner. Now, she was finally released Wednesday night. Her family told NBC they still had to get the mistake taken off her record. And of course, remember that she had a record before this, even though she hadn't done anything wrong. If it had not been for the media and the press, nobody would have taken the time to do what they did today, her sister said. As for Hudson herself, she is seeking answers. I want to find out what happened. I want to find out how this happened. I want it to not happen to anyone else ever again. Family is considering legal action. So... Her sister said, Julie just so happened to have a family that was able to get the information together if we needed to get the funds together. It's so many people out there that don't have that, and that's what struck a chord in me. Meanwhile, the Philadelphia District Attorney's Office says they became aware of Julie Hudson's predicament last evening, thanks in part to media reports. Uh, I'm not aware of any efforts by Texas authorities to contact my office directly about the misidentification of Ms. Hudson, which led to her arrest by Philadelphia police. Once the district attorney's office independently became aware that Webster police had confirmed to local media that they had sought the wrong Ms. Hudson for arrest, we mobilized quickly to make sure Ms. Hudson was released from custody as soon as possible. And there is some confusion in the story about whether they thought that the person who did the shoplifting was named Julie Hudson and then found the Julie Hudson in Philadelphia and said, oh, that looks like her. Or if they found the photograph and then attached her name to the shoplifter. We don't know that. But if they simply went off the fact that this Julie Hudson here, Julie Hudson there, they must be the same people, that would be crazy. And I mentioned I had a neighbor named Julie Hudson. It's not that uncommon of a name. And I've mentioned before, my name is Steve Lato. You you know that, right? (laughs) There are other people in America named Steve Lato. There's a couple in Michigan. Uh, There's one in the Northwest who's a mathematician. Uh, there is a uh, part of a duo, Wright and Lato, out of Minnesota, uh, Steve Lato. And there's also one in the Midwest who works at some kind of food company. But I can also tell you that for a period of time, I lived in an area where there's a Steve Lato who lived near me. I never met the guy, but the guy had a rap sheet this long. 
and he was 10 years older than I am. And I actually made a mental note when pulled over by the police, if in this area, when you hand your driver's license over, say, please check the date of birth. Because in case they look at the name and go, whoa, this is the guy who causes all the trouble. Never got pulled over, didn't have to do it, but that was in the back of my mind. Meanwhile, Julie Hudson is a Philadelphia resident who has no criminal record and is pursuing a PhD. What happened to her should not have happened, and her family deserves a great deal of credit for successfully advocating for her freedom with the media in Houston and in Philadelphia. I am also thankful for the quick action of our charging unit led by supervising ADA and they go on and on there explaining um, the people who arrested her and held her are now explaining why they should get all kinds of credit for letting her out. Um, they also did apologize, though, to Hudson and her family on behalf of every agency involved. Uh, as an institution, law enforcement owes you an apology. We ought to be able to do better than to rely on relatives and rely on the media to be a notification process to get you out of jail six days later without your meds. And that, of course, is another problem. Uh, while they said that Philadelphia police follows standard protocol, he also added that changes in information sharing between jurisdictions could help prevent similar mistakes from happening again. So there might be something systemic here, as they say. If somebody wants us to send someone back, which we will do, under the detainer, there's nothing wrong with letting us read your affidavit of probable cause. At least we might have picked up the phone and said, you did what? Let me get this straight. You used social media to make an identification? Why else do you think this Philadelphian is committing retail thefts in Texas? <laughs> Meanwhile, the mayor also chimed in. We commend the rapid response and coordination between the police department, courts, district attorney's office, and department of prisons to ensure that Julie Hudson was released as quickly and as safely as possible. We are dismayed by the ordeal that she and her family went through due to an erroneous warrant from another jurisdiction and thankful that she is now at home. So again, I'm not sure if they thought that the person in Texas was named Julie Hudson and then searched Julie Hudson on social media and found this woman in Philadelphia. Or if they were simply looking at photographs somehow, found this woman, her name is Julie Hudson, and said, oh, let's go with that. But there were several references that made it sound like they had the name also and then found the woman in Philadelphia. And I did not do this, but I assure you, if you go on Facebook and type in Julie Hudson, you're going to get a whole bunch of people coming back and the same is probably true on Instagram and Twitter and any place else you go. So this is the kind of thing that makes you wonder because 30 years ago, this wouldn't have happened, at least not this way, because the people in Texas had said, well, we've got a grainy surveillance video, which is what they'd have back then, and it looks like there's a woman there, and someone goes, oh, her name is Julie Hudson. Well, there's no social media to check that against. So they would have just started doing things locally, looking for people locally named Julie Hudson. So it is kind of strange. And the distance between Texas and Pennsylvania is quite large. So mistakes were made, but it's crazy. But it boils down to somebody looking at a social media photograph and going, oh, that's the person we want right there. Without doing a little more thought process and saying, huh, but they're in Philadelphia. I wonder what the odds are of that. So it's strange. She's out now, and they're considering legal action. So Philly woman wrongfully charged with Texas crime due to mistaken identity. I saw several articles that pointed out she's never been to Texas, which also seems like a pretty good alibi. NBCPhiladelphia.com ran the story. Leah Oko, David Chang, and Dan Stam wrote it. Nathan sent it. Thanks a lot. Questions or comments, put them below. Let's talk to you later. Bye-bye. Thank you for watching Leto's Law. Some people walk in the rain, others just get wet.